find the equivariant cohomology. Uh -huh. And to define equivariant cohomology, right, we need a contractible space on which the group acts freely. Okay? Um, but there, there could be many contractible spaces on which the group acts freely. So we have to show that the definition is independent of which space we choose. Okay? And, and that's what I want to show today. Okay? So, um, well, I will discuss some other topics that will lead to that. Um, so the first lecture today will be on homotopy groups and CW complexes. Okay. So this is really um, just um, a review of some standard notions in algebraic topology. Okay. Um, so um, I will first define a fiber bundle okay, because there's a very useful uh, theorem about homotopy groups of fiber bundles that we will use. Okay. So definition. Okay. So a fiber bundle uh -huh, with fiber F uh -huh. um, it's a surjection B, uh -huh, which is locally a product uh -huh. you cross F okay so what this means is that every point B in B has a neighborhood U such that okay, the inverse image of U um, um, so is homeomorphic to this by a fiber preserving homeomorphism. There is a fiber preserving homeomorphism. Phi of u from pi inverse of u to u cross f. Okay. Uh huh. So fiber preserving means that the fiber above a point B uh, goes to the fiber above B. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move this up. Uh -huh. Yeah. So basically. Uh -huh. You know, so lo locally it looks like this, right? You have an open set U, and above it, it's a product U cross F. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So uh, there are many examples of fiber bundles. Mm. Let's see. Uh, a covering space is a fiber bundle. Okay. Uh, because a covering space it means that locally it looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. A covering space locally looks like that. Okay. So, so for example. Um, if you project R to the circle, uh -huh. um, so that's a fiber bundle. So here is a real line, 
and you project it to a quotient where you identify zero and one. Uh huh. So you get a circle. Uh huh. <laughs> That's a fiber bundle whose fiber is is Z. Um, okay, and then you can also show that uh, the complex projective space, which you, you defined last time, gives you a fiber bundle. Let me see. This goes up. Uh -huh. Okay, so another example is... Uh, the natural projection from an odd sphere to CPN okay, that we defined last time is a fiber bundle with fiber S1. Okay? Um, so we have to prove that this is locally trivial, okay, locally a product. And, okay, I, I, I did that in the book, so I'm not going to do it here. And this is called the Hopf bundle. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay, so there are lots of examples of fiber bundles. Um, and the main theorem about the homotopy groups of fiber bundles is the homotopy exact sequence. of a fiber bundle. Mm -hmm. um, so now, to calculate homotopy groups, we always pick a base point. So suppose um, we have a base point, x naught in E, and then V naught in V, and then we have this surjection, which is a fiber bundle with fiber F. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, F, let's pick F to be the inverse image of the base point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll assume that B is path connected. Because when you calculate homotopy groups, you only see the component, the connected component, uh, uh, the path connected component of the base point. You don't see the other components. So you might as well assume that B is path connected. Okay? And then we uh, will let X naught be the base point of F, uh huh. So, and and let's call I the inclusion okay. now. Um, Homotopy groups, you know, is a functor. So a map between spaces will induce a map of homotopy groups. Okay. So this map, this inclusion map, it will induce um, a map of homotopy groups I lower star. Uh -huh. And it's defined in the natural way, right? The only way possible because an element of this homotopy group is the homotopy classes of maps of the K sphere into F. And you can follow that map by the map I, then you get a map of the K sphere into E. So that's the image, okay? So 
that's how the I star is defined. Um, and then this row also induces a map, rho, rho star of homotopy groups from pi k e to pi k b. Okay. So these are the easy maps. Mm -hmm. And then we have below that uh, pi k, let me see, pi k minus 1. F. Uh -huh. uh, you see, uh, um, uh, yeah, so if you have a fiber bundle, mm -hmm, um, now over some base space, uh -huh, if you have a loop here, it gives you an element of pi 1 of B. Now, um, a fiber bundle has the property that you can lift the loop. So you lift it upstairs, but when you lift it, it may not come back to the same point. So it goes to some other point. Okay. Uh, in the fiber. This is the fiber. And so you see, um, an element of pi 1 of b gives you a point in the fiber, which is in pi 0. Okay? So uh, pi 1 will go to pi 0. Uh -huh. And uh, in general, pi k will go to pi k minus 1. Uh -huh. So there is this connecting map, OK? And then this sequence continues. Okay? And the theorem is that this gives you a long exact sequence, OK? Mm -hmm. Now, this is quite standard in homotopy theory. And um, I'm just going to use it, but not to prove it, OK? Part, oh, oh, sorry. The base point of B should be B0. Right. Good. Yeah. Uh-huh. OK. Uh, so let's, um, let's apply this theorem. Mm -hmm. Let's apply this theorem mm -hmm. to calculate the, uh, the homotopy groups of S1, the circle. Okay. So last time I said that the homotopy groups of Sears are in general, very difficult to calculate. Now, we could calculate the ones below the dimension of the sphere. Okay? Um, they're all zero. Uh -huh. and, uh, but above the dimension of the sphere, in general, it's very irregular, and you can't calculate it. Well, you can, but I mean, there's no general formula. However, for S1, we can calculate all the homotopy groups. Right. pi k of s1 okay. by using the homotopy exact sequence. So from the homotopy exact sequence by the homotopy exact sequence of the fiber bundle from R to S1. Okay. So we have pi k of R into pi k of S1. Uh, oh, no, the fiber. We have to start with the fiber. The fiber is Z. So pi k of Z. Okay. I'm omitting the base point. Okay. And then this goes down to pi k minus 1 of z, pi k minus 1 of r. Okay? So you get this exact sequence. And um, yeah, because r is contractible, so all the pi k's are 0, okay? because r is the same as a point. Okay? 
it has the homotopy part of the point. So, so since pi k of r is zero, so we get pi k of s1 is isomorphic to pi k minus 1 of z. Okay. Uh -huh. And here, you know, you have to choose the base point, right? So this is S naught, and then some base point, choose it to be zero. Yeah, but as I said, when you calculate homotopy groups, you only see the connected component of the base point. So this is going to be trivial. You only see a point here. This is zero. Okay. Uh, oh, so this is for all k greater than or equal to two. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. Because when k is equal to, uh, yeah. Um, when k is one, then you end up with, um, yeah. Th this will end up with pi zero of f and then pi zero of e uh -huh. um, and you know these are not groups anymore pi zero is just a set okay? yeah um, uh, right so you know you can't quite say that this is isomorphic to this at the end, OK? Um, so for k greater than or equal. And we already know that pi 1 of s1 is z. Uh -huh. So pi 1 of s1 is z. And pi 0 is z. And pi 0 s1 is, is 0, OK? It has one connected component. Okay, so so we can com compute all the homotopy groups of S one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, uh, now, okay, so that's the only tool I need today, actually, from homotopy theory, um, and then. Now, last time we talked about the infinite sphere. Okay. Uh, so, and I said the infinite sphere is a CW complex. So I want to define this, a CW complex. Yeah? So why is pi zero S1 equal to zero? Oh, um, it's, it's because S1 is connected, right? So, uh, Pi zero. Oh, I, I think I should. Yeah. So, you know what? Uh, yeah. The base point. Probably we should just use S one to be the complex circle, and so the base point we can choose to be one, and then this is one. It's a connected component of one. Okay. Uh, this just means that you know it's a set with one element. Uh -huh. Okay, but you can write zero too because it's just a set with one element. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. So homotopy theory works best in the category of CW complexes. Okay, CW complexes are topological spaces obtained by you know, attaching cells, okay? Uh -huh. So for example, the two sphere, you know, you can get the two sphere starting with two points. Okay. And then you attach two one cells to it, okay? okay. 
So the one cell there and the one cell there. Then you get a circle. Let me draw it differently because I want it to be the equator. Okay, so, and then you attach two, two cells. Okay? So a two cell is a two-dimensional disk. So you put a two-dimensional disk on the top and another one at the bottom, and that gives you the two sphere. Okay? Uh -huh. So that's how you construct the CW complex. Uh -huh. And so I should first define what I mean by attaching cells. Okay? Uh -huh. um, so when you attach a cell, you are attaching <coughs> a closed disk. So that, let the n be the n-dimensional closed, say, unit disk. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so that's the N. Uh, now I come back here. And I'm going to attach it to a topologi topological space A. A be a topological space. Uh -huh. huh. That's A. Okay. So I take that disk and I put it, I attach it here. When I attach an N disk, I'm actually just gluing the boundary to the disk. So I need an attaching map. So phi. An attaching map goes from the boundary of dn to a. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've got this disk here. And the boundary goes somewhere here. Mm -hmm. by the attaching map. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, so then the picture is that when you put this, this over there, but the, um, the open interior of the disk, it's not, it's not attached. So, so what, what you get is something like this. That's what you get. And so uh, x is obtained from A by attaching an N cell via the attaching map. Uh -huh. If so x is this picture. Uh -huh. So x, okay. well, you first take the disjoint union of A and B, uh -huh. and then you identify the boundary of B, right, with its image in A, OK? 
Okay, so you you take the quotient. That's how you identify points where x in the boundary of D is equivalent to its image in A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the mathematical description of what you are doing when you attach a cell. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, uh, okay. Let me see. So now this goes down, I think. And this goes up. Okay. Um, now this open part, um, we call EN. This part. So it's EN is the open cell. Okay, it's the uh, it's the interior of D. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So when we attach a cell, okay, yeah, I'm going to say, uh -huh. oh, um, let E N be uh, the interior of B N uh -huh. in. <laughs> it's really the image of the interior, right? In X which is A is joint union B N uh, divided by this equivalence relation. Okay? So uh, so if I want to be very precise, <laughs> E N is the uh, image of the interior in X. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I can, this is our notation when we attach a cell. X is obtained from A by um, attaching um, E N. Well, X is the union of A and E N. And uh, sometimes, I put the attaching map there, fine. Okay, well, but sometimes I don't. So I just write that. Okay. Uh huh? Um, now that's when you attach a single cell, but you can attach a lot of cells all at once. Okay, so we can attach infinitely many cells all at once. So you would form X is, so then there will be infinitely many attaching maps and you take A disjoint union with all the disks, let's say they're indexed by lambda, uh -huh. And you introduce the equivalence relation as before. Uh -huh. um, and so then you would get A as the union, A, X as the union of A with, you know, infinitely many open N cells. Okay? So, well, here I'm attaching just N cells, but then I can attach cells of different dimensions. Uh -huh. One after, one, one step up, one dimension at a time also, okay? 
So, um, so that's attaching cells. Now well, let's move this up. Uh, uh, um, no, I think this one should go up, right? And this one goes down. Okay, and now we go here. Okay, so now I can define a CW complex. Uh -huh. So a CW complex, it's a Hausdorff space. It's a Hausdorff space X. with an increasing sequence of closed subspaces such that, so you start with x0, x0 is a discrete set of points. Okay. You start with a discrete set of points, and then whenever you have some xn, um, well, whenever you have some x n minus one, you obtain the next one by attaching n cells. Okay? So x one is obtained from x zero by attaching one cells. X two is obtained from x one by attaching two cells, and so on. Okay? So um, for n greater than or equal to one, x n is obtained from xn minus 1 by attaching n cells. Okay? Mm -hmm. There could be infinitely many of them. E n lambda. Uh huh. And then. Um, um, you need to give a topology to X. Okay, so, and this topology is called the weak topology. With respect to this sequence. Now, the weak topology means that a set is closed if and only if its intersection with each xn is closed in xn. So S is closed in x if and only if S intersect xn is closed in xn. Okay? So um, mm -hmm. See, in general, right, well, here, S it would be the union of these closed sets. Uh -huh. In general, when you take the union of closed sets, it may not be closed, but um, in the weak topology, okay, that's how you define a closed set. Okay, so that makes it easy to check if a set is closed or not. You just take the intersection with xn. Okay? Pardon? Yeah, for all n. 
micro O n. Okay. You see? Oh. <laughs> I think I did it wrong this time. Let me see if I could somehow avoid the shadow. Because if this is too high, then there will be a shadow. So let's leave it like here. Uh -huh. okay. um, now, there is a theorem about CW complexes that says that um, uh, the closure of each cell contains only finitely many cells of lower dimensions. Okay, so that's the definition of CW complex. And then there's this theorem, the closure of each cell in a CW complex contains only finitely many cells of lower dimension. Uh -huh. okay. It has an open cell of the same dimension, right? But then the um, the boundary consists of finally many cells of lower dimensions. And this theorem is, this condition is called the closure finite condition. Okay. And so that's why it's called a CW complex. That C stands for closure finite and W stands for weak topology, okay? And you can find a proof of this theorem in Hatcher's book, okay? So Hatcher's book will be the standard reference for any facts from algebraic topology, okay? You can download that book too, you know? He's very generous, you know? Yeah. You don't have to pay money for it. Um, yeah, so you can find like the proof of the homotopy exact sequence of a fiber bundle in Hatchard's book also, and, and, and the theorem also. Okay, so, I mean, my goal is to use some theorems from algebraic topology, right, to do equivariant cohomology, okay? So there are some theorems um, that I will simply assume, and if you haven't seen them before, it's okay, you could assume them too. <laughs> Um, okay, so, um, so, so the first example of a CW complex is, um, um, I think I can move this down and move this up, right? Yeah. So it's the infinite sphere. Uh -huh. S infinity is a CW complex okay. with the weak topology, okay? We have to give S infinity a topology, and we give it the weak topology uh -huh, with respect to um, the um, I think, yeah, I'm using the odd spheres, right? S1 in S3 in S5, okay? Give it the weak topology. Um, and then this, this is a sequence of closed subspaces. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, and each time, now, uh, yeah, so S3 is obtained from S1. Uh, we're skipping a dimension. So uh, yeah, so that, that means if you treat this as your X1, then it's also your X2, okay? You, you add node, uh, 
No, 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 just a minute. Um, uh, 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 uh. No, actually, I'm sorry. I think, no, I think I, I actually want to define S infinity as starting from S0, S1, S2, okay? So, um, yeah. Uh -huh. So here, S infinity is the union of Sn for all n. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And each time, right, you add um, two cells of that dimension. S2 is obtained from S1 by adding two one cells, and so on. Um, and so, and S2 is two points, so it's a discrete set. So this is, uh, yeah, it's a CW complex. But you see, when you take the union over all the spheres, that is the same set as the union over only the odd spheres, right? 2K plus 1. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right? Because the even spheres are contained in the odd spheres when you take the union, so you get the same set. Okay? But this gives you the structure of a CW complex when you use all the spheres. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this goes up. Okay, so um, now let's, let's show that S infinity is contractible. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so last time we prove that pi k of Sn is equal to zero for k less than n. Uh -huh. um, and so today, I want to prove that pi k of S infinity is zero for all k. Now, pi zero is equal to zero. That means that it has a single element, zero. Okay. Um, okay, so now to prove this, you know, I want to use this fact. So I'm going to look at a continuous map from the k sphere into s infinity. And because the k sphere is compact, the image will be compact. Okay? So that image in S infinity, I have to show that it lies inside some finite dimensional sphere. Okay? And to do that, um, I'm going to use a little trick. Uh -huh. You see, S infinity has the same homotopy type as, as this, this telescope. Okay, so I'm going to say represent this as um, S0. I multiply, uh, S0 is really two points, but I represent it as this little line segment. And I multiply it by a uh, unit interval, okay? So I get this. 
Now S infinity lies, S zero lies inside S one. This is going to be S one. I multiply that by a unit interval and get that. This S1 lies inside S2. I multiply that by unit interval. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing here. Uh -huh. um, this is this is what I call a telescope, an infinite telescope. Okay. Now this is time zero, time zero. And then, you know, at time t, I move everything, t units, okay, for t, t small, move this in. Okay. Mm -hmm. At time one, this goes in here, and this segment goes in there, this segment goes in there, and so on. So, there is a deformation retraction of the telescope onto S infinity. Okay. I just push it in, okay? And so that's why the telescope has the same homotopy type as S infinity, okay? But the advantage of working with the telescope is that it has a projection to the real line. Because, you know, the telescope looks like this. And you can just project it to the real line. It has a projection to the real line. Uh, now, if you have a continuous map from SK into the telescope, it will give you an element of pi k of the telescope. Now you can follow it by this uh, projection then pi composed with f goes from sk to r, okay? And since sk is compact, and pi composed with f is continuous, So this image is compact in R. Okay. Now what do you know about a compact set in R? A compact set in a Euclidean space is closed and bounded. Okay. So closed and bounded. So it lies inside some finite interval. In, let's say uh, it's going to lie in zero n for some 
natural number for positive integer. Um, and, and that says that f of sk, well, is in the inverse image of this interval. Okay, so it is in a finite telescope. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. uh, now this one, no, I don't want to erase that one. So, so now I go here. So thus, f of sk is in pi inverse of this interval, which is a, which is a finite telescope. ending in S, Sn, right? And so it, it, this finite telescope can be, there's a deformation retraction of the finite telescope into Sn, so which has the same homotopy type as Sn, and therefore F is non-homotopic. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you can choose N large enough. We can choose, we can always choose N to be larger. So we can choose N to be greater than K, then F is non-homotopic, okay? And so that, that proves that any element of pi k of s infinity is zero. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. OK, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I have gone over a little bit, so Let's uh, take a 10 minute break and we'll start again at 125, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm.